When it comes to ham radio, no matter what operation you're doing, whether that's POTA, SOTA, or even just something in your shack, you need a couple basic components. You need a transceiver. You need an antenna. You need some kind of feed line between the transceiver and the antenna, which is mainly coax. But you also need another pretty critical component. You need to power up your radio. So today, I'm gonna show you all how and what I use to make my battery box. Stick around. Uh, hold on a second, hold on a second, guys. I forgot to mention this. Disclaimer, I'm not endorsed, sponsored by anybody, not Harbor Freight, Power Works. I do make a small commission off of Amazon as an affiliate, so if you are gonna build a battery box, do me a favor and hit those links in the description. I think I found almost everything that I used in this build. Also, please make sure that you know what you're doing electronically before you get started on this, because I don't wanna see anybody get hurt. You are dealing with a battery, so make sure you know. Before you get started, you're gonna need some tools, including, but not limited to, dikes, strip and cut wire. You're also gonna need drill bits. This is not very thick plastic. On this battery box build, you don't need any crazy drill bits. And you're also going to need a hole saw, which I have a one and an eighth that I use for most of the components that connect into the top of the box. You're probably gonna need a multimeter, and you're gonna need a drill. Electrical tape and a sharp knife, and not seen, safety glasses. Optional tools include solder gun, heat gun. If you are using power pole connectors, you're gonna need your power pole crimping tool. Also another optional one is a crimping tool for different kind of connectors. You're gonna need some zip ties, various sizes. You're gonna need different wire, if you're like me, you probably use power poles for most of your power connections. You're gonna need some power poles, connectors and things to splice wires together. Two batteries that are in this, Iwino 12 volt, 12 amp hour ABS sealed batteries that I got from Chameleon Antenna on a very good sale. There's the other one. These do come with these pre-power pulled leads for the battery. So we're gonna open this up and I'm gonna kind of go from the bottom and kind of build this up, kind of a reverse engineering thing here. <laughs> so hopefully I can get this as best as I can. So we've got our two batteries right up here. And these are gonna go right in to the bottom. So what I did is I took this fuse panel, this little, I, I think this is actually made for like a fishing boat or something, but hey, it works. You could change the fuses in it. So this, it's got a little cover that comes right off. And this just uses regular blade fuses, just like cars and a lot of other things use. So very easy to replace. If a fuse does blow right there, you got a little red indicator light that will come on to let you know which one blew. All right, so I'm just gonna put the case back on this. Just clicks on there. Now, I did use a, quite a few different connectors to make this work. These are actually Wago, Wago types, and these are from Harbor Freight. I also got this kind of connector, which actually goes onto a wire and you just press this together little blade piece, metal blade piece that goes into the wire and doesn't, you don't even have to break the shielding up. You don't even have to strip this or anything. And then you could just plug another wire like you see here, like this black one coming out right there, which is actually going up to my battery monitor. And then you're, of course, your power poles. Since we're talking about the bottom of the battery box here first, I'm gonna try to get this in focus for you as much as I can. That right there is the little lights. I got one there and then I got one right there. And let me show you what those look like. I did get extra lights, what they look like, not mounted. This is what they look like. So what you do in the battery box is you just drill a hole where you want them to go. So I mean, you could literally put some here on the side, you know, whatever you're desire is there. You take your cable, stripped at the end there, black, red, goes through the box. And then what you do is you take 
that little nut and while it's mounted to the box, so it's gonna be facing out like that way. And then this just screws onto it and tightens up to, your, to the box there. I don't really remember what size I used to drill this out, and you will need a little bit of a bigger bit there. And then that's what they, that's where I put them. I figured the two would be just fine. If these burn out, they are very easy to replace. They come in a pack of six, I believe. Yeah, a couple extra. The wires come off this little fuse panel here, and then they go up to either power, well, they actually go down to power the lights, or they go up for the different connection points that go to the top of the battery box. Now to put these in, all you need to do is you just drill a little pilot hole in the center of where you wanna put these. And then basically, once that little pilot hole is done, then you take your hole saw, your hole saw drill, and then you just go through and then you punch it out all the way with this. This is fairly thin plastic. So just forewarning, you don't need a lot of speed and you don't need a lot of brute force pushing down on it to get the job done. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, after you put these in, you might wanna take a piece of sandpaper. I don't, it doesn't, the grit doesn't really matter. Just take a piece of sandpaper and you can just kind of clean up these holes a little bit because it might have a little few little jagged edges in there. These connect by just simply, there's a plastic washer that goes on there. This one happens to be for the power poles and then it just tightens up to hold them in. And then you just repeat that. This is the USB A and C connector. This one way up here with the two connectors right there. That's a cigarette lighter. This is your switch. This is one switch for power this whole thing on. And then the other switch, just down a little bit here. This other switch is for the lights. And then behind all this, right in there, that square piece with the two wires coming out, that's my monitor. I'll leave links to all of these below. Um, so this one up here, this is for the solar charger. So the solar charger is gonna plug in there. It's gonna come into the battery box. And I actually have a SAE connector for it, which you can get SAE to power pole, you can get SAE to SAE. They make all sorts of different adapters for this. So this is going to then go to a power pole adapter and it's gonna plug into this. This is from PowerWorks. This is the PD4 or power distribution four. So I'm gonna have both batteries, two batteries, a solar panel charger, controller coming in, they'll charge it. And then on this last one going out, this goes to power the whole thing, the whole battery box, back to the fuse box. That's from PowerWorks, that's the PD4. All right, another little accessory that I would suggest getting, and you don't have to mount the little battery display like I got in here that, but this is from PowerWorks, and this is a precision watt meter. This is really nice. This side goes to your battery, your power, or it's, as it says on here, source. This goes out to your load, your radio, or whatever other equipment. And what's nice about this is, is that this can give you, as you're using your radio or whatever, you can actually see on here, like what you're drawing amperage-wise, where your voltage is at. So this is some versatile in that you can use this on different pieces of equipment. If you're only gonna use one battery, if you're using two batteries, you know, this, this helps where you can use this on a lot of different pieces of your kit, and it will give you a pretty good idea of amperage, what you're drawing, and of course your battery voltage. Really recommend getting one of these. This is my solar panel controller. If you're, if you're gonna have a solar panel set up to charge back to your batteries and your battery box, you're gonna need one of these. Now, what I like about this thing is, is that this has different battery types. So it has gel, AGM, and LiPo. And of course it, it gives you a percentage up here. Pretty, you know, pretty easy to use. I got a little chart on the back here. You don't wanna put your solar panel directly into your battery box or your batteries, or if you're just using a battery, you need to have this to help control it. Yeah, that could be really bad if you don't do this. So this is the controller. This will plug into here. <laughs> Gotta get the right way just like that. And then you'll have the solar panel plugging into here and you can monitor it on here. 
One thing I forgot to show here and I will do right now, the switches came in a big bag with a bunch in there. LED in there and they have different colors, red. I think there's green and blue. They're so cheap that if one breaks or doesn't work or whatnot, you just buy a whole bag and then you just replace it and it's really not that big of a deal. I actually 3D printed these and these fit on the bottom of the battery box and they actually kind of help to gap the space between the batteries and the lights mounted in there so that that way the battery doesn't bump into the lights. And these I just put down on the bottom just like that little angle things. You could blow, you can make these bigger or smaller. Just something to think about. Just want to give a quick, just want to give a quick little top down. So there's your solar charger. There's a switch for your lights. There's your gauge for your battery. Here's the master switch, master on and off switch right there. Cigarette lighter adapter right there. USB A and C charger right there. These are power pole connectors. You got two of them. You've got plenty of room. You could put more over here. If you don't want to have a cigarette lighter adapter, you could put another power pole thing in here. Um, if it's really important for you to charge a tablet, your phone or whatnot, you could put another one of these in here. However you want to set this up as you need. And what's nice about this is close it up and it's all protected. You know, this is from Harbor Freight, pretty inexpensive. This fuse panel, I just took a piece of wood and all I did was put the fuse panel on the top and then I just, I just screwed it into the battery box with just two wood screws going through the plastic and you know what, it works just fine. Boom. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate all the comments, especially from the last video. Also, just kind of want to give everybody a heads up, a little preview. I got a new radio. I got this new Zbit X. Wow. I'm entering the QRP world here. I don't know Morse code yet or CW, but yeah, this does FT8. So yeah, I'm gonna take this to a, a park and uh, play around with it. Stay tuned. Make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and share this with anybody that you know that might be looking to build a battery box at some point. It all really helps the channel. It really helps me know what you, my viewers, wanna see. Boop.